Guys, I found out something, I call it groundbreaking, about Vesuvius. And this is something we can transport not only for an evaluation about what might happen if Vesuvius erupts now, because many scientists say it's overdue, but also we can transport it over to Campi Flegre because we're dealing with a similar scenario there. And that involves earthquakes as well. But this study has basically changed what we thought happened in Pompeii at this eruption of Vesuvius. And that is important, important knowledge that we need to know in order to make better evacuation plans or to prepare better for a potential new eruption, not only of Vesuvius, but especially of Campi Flegri. So let's dive into this. This is fascinating. Um, gives me goosebumps. Let's dive in, guys. But I want to tell you about a new study that has shown that when Pompeii was destroyed, the earthquakes that came with this eruption of Mount Vesuvius, that was roughly 2000 years ago, have made the whole incident even more catastrophic and even more people were lost. And this is a new study that has found out about this. It's conducted from the Instituto Nazionale di Geofisica and Volcanologica, the INGV, and the Pompeii Archaeological Park. So what the authors of this study have found out is that the destruction of the Roman town of Pompeii roughly 2000 years ago was a double disaster. So they had the volcanic eruption of Mount Vesuvius, and that was followed, even followed, by powerful earthquakes that did even more destruction. And I'm pretty sure they also had earthquakes before the eruption even occurred. So what the scientists are saying, they said, we prove that seismicity during the eruption played a significant role in the destruction of Pompeii and possibly influenced by the choices of the Pompeians who faced an inevitable ending. You know what I mean? You can't say the words on YouTube. Um, this is what the volcanologists at the INGV are saying. So they're, they're trying to reconstruct the interactions between the volcanic events and the seismic events and then their effects on buildings and on humans and we know that makes sense and you know we've always said at Campi Flegre it's rumbling so much and the buildings are very very old old stone buildings that could collapse that could block the escape routes block the roads bridges stuff like this so the government has said they want to invest heavily to bring buildings up to code, to invest into like seismic infrastructure, to make buildings safer. So that probably makes sense now if you look at the history of Vesuvius and what happened in Pompeii. So I think this is a very interesting study. And uh, they did excavations there of the buildings of Pompeii. It was quite well preserved because it was so suddenly that everything was covered um, with volcanic deposits that kind of served as preservatives. And so that's how the researchers were able to find damage to the buildings that was likely caused by seismic shaking, by earthquakes. And what was more important, they found two bodies of people with injuries that we would nowadays connect with a strong earthquakes. So they showed signs of strong earthquakes, that this is what ended them and not the volcanic eruption maybe. So they said, and this is very, very interesting, we found peculiar characteristics that were inconsistent with the effects of vo volcanic phenomena that are usually described in volcanological literature about the incident in Pompeii. So these are new findings. So they said, once they saw that, 
They said there had to be a different explanation. And remember, this Vesuvius eruption has caught the residents of Pompeii by surprise in the midst of their daily life. They were not suspecting any, anything. And Mount Vesuvius erupted shortly after 1 p.m. Um, there's some writings of a guy that's called Plenty the Younger. He was a Roman historian who has survived the disaster and wrote down his story. So he wrote that for about 18 hours, pumice, these are small volcanic particles and rocks, like small rocks and ash particles fell on Pompeii, which caused people to seek shelter. So they were running into their homes, trying to get away from hot ashes and particles. They can hit you really hard. They can end you, right? And then it seems the eruption paused and many residents who survived until then, they might have thought that they're safe now, but then strong earthquakes started. And that is super interesting because that we haven't heard before. So the people who did not leave their shelters, their buildings, their structures, they were possibly overwhelmed by earthquake-induced collapses of these structures that were already overburdened by all this volcanic material that was probably on top of them. So these two individuals, these two bodies that they recovered that showed signs of strong earthquakes, that showed signs that this was what ended them, scientists are thinking that this was the fate that was occurring to them. Very, very interesting, guys, don't you think? So they say there are several hints that these individuals were not ended from inhaling ash or from the extreme heat of the pyroclastic surge from Vesuvius that was ending most people that were trapped inside the city walls. Those two were not. So they say that the skeletal remains of both people rest on a layer on top of a layer of volcanic deposits. So that is proof that they survived the initial phase of the eruption. So they're saying position of, they call it individual one, they think it's a male aged around 50 years at the moment when this happened. Um, that location suggests that he was suddenly crushed by the collapse of a large wall fragment that fell on top of him. And that's why he had several traumas and broken bones, and they could still see that. And then there's individual number two, also they, they say a 50-year-old male. Um, they say he might have been aware of the danger and he tried to protect himself by crouching in a corner of the room and hiding beneath a round wooden object so they could really determine it that precise. This is amazing because um, the researchers found faint traces of that wooden object in these volcanic ashes. Um, so this is where he was hiding before he also was crushed and ended by that crush. So where did these earthquakes suddenly come from? Because usually earthquakes die down once the eruption begins because the magma has built that tunnel to let the magma out. So usually it calms down. So volcanically triggered earthquakes, usually they're linked to changes in pressure caused by the movement of that magma, the molten rock beneath the volcano. But usually we see this when it's on the move to erupt. So they found a stone relief in Pompeii, and that shows the aftermath of an earthquake that struck the town 17 years before that catastrophic Vesuvius eruption. 
Um, so they say, although 17 years apart, and that's interesting again, I find this mysterious, guys. It is not clear if this quake was linked to the reawakening of Mount Vesuvius after it had laid dormant for over a thousand years. So volcano time frames are different from our human time frames, right? So 17 years for Vesuvius, that's probably not much. So, but would you think, well, 17 years ago, there was an earthquake, that this is why Vesuvius could be waking up. Scary, guys. So when Vesuvius then finally erupted um, in September or October of 79 CE, um, they could still see the damage of seismic shaking. It was still visible on some buildings. So you also have to know, it took them a while to rediscover Pompeii. They discovered Pompeii again in April of 1748. They found the bodies of over 1,150 individuals in these ruins that they excavated. Isn't this, I mean, if you were there as a geologist or archeologist and you find that, it must have blown their minds. So all this and all these people were buried in a single day by this series of pyroclastic outcome and hours of ashfall that was basically forming a rocky barrier against being discovered against grave robbers but also erosion so this destruction of pompeii during that volcanic eruption and that's kind of like the irony in it assured pompeii's preservation over time so what are the scientists saying as conclusion new insight into the destruction of Pompeii gets us very close to the experience of the people who lived there 2000 years ago. The choices they made as well as the dynamics of the events which remain a focus of our research. That's what they're saying. Um, you know, How the people behaved decided over life or ending in the last hours of the city's existence. That's the conclusion that the director of the Pompeii Archaeological Park draws from this. And guys, I know this is 2000 years ago, but you know, this could happen again. Just this time, there's more than 3 million people in the area. And you know, Naples will be affected by either one, Campi Fligri or Vesuvius. They're both bad. Although scientists tend to say Campi Fligri is worse if it erupts. So I hope you found that interesting, guys. Check out my playlist. Check out my detailed videos about Vesuvius, what will happen if it erupts, about Campi Flickri, about the connection of both of them. Interesting stuff here in the end screen. If you want to support my channel, check out the links in the description of this video. Join my channel as a member for behind the scene insights. And uh, yeah, or go to my Buy Me A Coffee website, register for free. Um, you can also support the channel there, of course. And yeah, thank you for my new members for joining. Thank you for your coffees. Thank you for your supers. I'll see you very soon. Stay safe. Bye-bye.